Start of winter 2020, like a lot of us, I'm spending a lot more time at home and having far fewer guests than usual. So I thought I'd modify my guest room into something more practical and space saving. I really wanted to create a space that I could comfortably work from with plenty of desk, drawer and cabinet space, but also keep the spare bed for when I have visitors. And of course, I needed this to feel good for me. I'm a big fan of dark timber and black metal put together in an industrial warehouse kind of style. So once I'd settled on a design and calculated exactly how much timber I would need, I took a trip to a timber supplier in Western Sydney and chose a selection of finger-jointed merbau. Merbau is a hard and heavy timber often used in outdoor fencing and decking. For the four bed posts, I went with 1.8 meter lengths of 90 by 90 millimeter thickness and everything else was 90 by 45. The total size of the platform is going to be just a bit larger than a king single bed, which is about 2 by 1.2 meters. So day one, time to convert my balcony into a wood shop with a 150 buck Bunnings miter saw. Uh, I don't think my fish will enjoy sawdust any more than I will. Safety first. I'm starting with the loft bed, cutting the posts and the bearers. The next step was to trench cut the top of the posts so that the bearers would slot into the trench. I did this using about a dozen parallel cuts at the top of each post, and then chiseled out the remaining wood until it was smooth. I 3D printed a jig to make sure that my drill holes were all straight and consistent. And because some of these would be pressed up against the wall, I used a spade bit to recess the bolt heads. From here I lined up the bearers with the posts and fastened them together with coach screws. And now it was time to turn the frame upside down to work on the inside. For some reason at this point I decided not to be wearing any shoes, which is quite a miracle I didn't get a foot full of splinters. So here I'm propping the frame slightly off the ground so I can position the inside bearer. This is the piece of timber which will be supporting all of the slats, so it needed to be very firmly attached. I drilled some pilot holes before I applied the glue, and then screwed them firmly together. I spaced out the screws so that each one was directly under a slat. I also put a few small angled brackets between the slats just to reinforce the join. The next step was to cut some spaces to position the slats evenly across the bed and to hold them in place. I had to chisel out a little gap in some of them to allow for the brackets that I'd made earlier. and then glue them in place. So once this was done, it was time to assemble the outside frame. And these are actually a lot heavier than they look. Should have worn shoes. And by this time it was a little bit late for drilling, so I had to wait till the next day to bolt it all together. And of course make sure that the legs are all at 90 degrees. I attached a set of L-shaped brackets to each of the corners to stop the whole structure from simply shearing sideways and collapsing. And quick strength test. All feeling good, but certainly not stable yet. So time to add the mid-beams using the same jig and spade bit. I needed extra long coach screws for this joint to get through the post and once again secured them with L brackets to prevent shearing. It was at this point that I learned my floor was in fact slightly sloped, so I had to compromise a little bit on the angle of the side beams, which of course had to be black. Now I still wasn't very happy with the amount of forward and back rocking, so I really needed to add some triangle shapes to make the whole structure more rigid. Okay, time for a road trip to Tarrant Point in South Sydney. 
where a gentleman named Lee runs a business making small pieces of furniture from steel piping. I brought in my design and he fetched all the pieces for me and kindly assembled it in front of me. I also learned that having a pipe loop is a bit of a problem because by tightening one end you're loosening the other. So he gave me a special piece to close the loop, which I'm certainly glad he did. Okay, back at home, a four dollar can of black spray paint and an old bed sheet. The next morning, time to position it and secure it onto the front bearer. And as much as I love baby pink, I thought while I've got the spray paint out, I might as well paint the slats black as well. And delivery day. This is a 3.6 meter long piece of finger jointed merbau, which I had to shorten to 3.4 meters. This coincidentally being the length of the room, but also the maximum length that would fit up the stairs of my building. All eight floors. And once again, this is definitely heavier than it looks. So this hasn't all been done in the best order. I hadn't yet made the desk supports, so the desk at this point is just resting on the cabinets. And I still need to access the back of the loft to secure the mid-beam and add more L-brackets. And I'm still not happy with the stability of the structure. So instead of more triangles, I thought I'd place one large piece of plywood on the entire rear face above the middle beam and fasten it to the frame at multiple points. This should prevent any further left-right shearing and make the whole structure feel a lot more stable. And that was certainly a success. Moving the bed here felt like I was moving one solid piece of furniture. So as far as I could tell now, the only weak points were the front legs. Any sideways force on the front could technically cause the front legs to act as a kind of crowbar on the top corner joints. So to be safe, I attached two final triangle brackets to the front face to prevent this from happening. Okay, time to experiment with some stains. My main concern was the orangeness of the timber. I visited a craft shop and bought a cheap tube of blue watercolour, blue being the opposite of orange. I thought it might have been a silly idea, but after a bit of trial and error, I found that the right mix did actually reduce the orange hue of the timber while still preserving its rich grain. So time to sand the edges of the desk and apply coat number one, a mixture of a walnut stain and blue watercolour. And now coat number two, which is mostly just blue. And now the same for the loft. Once again, I probably could have done this before it was all assembled and been quite a lot easier. We're nearly done. Time to join two pieces of timber together to create a shelf. Now this won't be a very strong joint, but it will be reinforced from underneath. Sorry neighbours, it's only 8.30 though. And sand and stain again. Now the front half of this shelf will be resting on the desk and the rear half will be on legs to the ground. So for the front I thought I'd use more of the cheap steel pipe which I really do like the look of. And now for the desk support. I really wanted to avoid having a leg in the middle of the desk but I wasn't too sure how much the desk would sag in the middle. And as it turned out it did sag quite a bit. Uh, maybe just a few millimetres, but that was enough to lift the rear corners of the desk off the supports. So I needed to fasten the supports to the desk and create cantilevers to prevent any further sagging or bowing in the middle. And here's my daily visitors checking on my progress, which is very thoughtful of them. Now these legs I salvaged from an old IKEA bed and I fasten them to the underside of the shelf. And I ended up using a hollow timber door to support the rear edge of the desk and to attach the cantilevers. 
Okay, final step, making the ladder. After getting hold of some Tasmanian oak timber, I placed the lengths up against the bed at an angle that seemed about right, and I measured both the length of the ladder as well as the height off the ground of the point that the ladder would hook onto the rail, so I could calculate the angle that the ladder would sit. Time to think back to high school maths. Sine is hypotenuse? Opposite. Opposite on hypotenuse. And solve for x. Okay, it's about 70 degrees, so I needed to set the angle of the miter saw to 20 degrees and cut the legs and spaces all at exactly the same angle. Once I'd done this, I secured the spaces evenly up the ladder with glue and screws. I sanded all of the sharp edges to give it more of a friendly feel. And did my best to hide the screw heads. I sketched the design of how the ladder would hook onto the rail and printed off a stencil so I could transfer it easily onto the ladder. At this point I recalculated all of the lengths because I didn't quite trust the angle of the Ozito power saw and it was in fact a couple of centimeters off. I used a hole saw and a jigsaw to cut out the shape. Okay, after a final sand and stain, it was time to assemble it with the treads. I got some cheap treated pine and cut it into 35cm lengths, and painted it black to match everything else. I slotted them in between the spaces and secured them with one coach screw on each side. And at this point I was pretty keen on cleaning up, taking some photos and testing the ladder. <laughs> 